Hey, what's up guys? Carolina Millan here. Welcome to a new episode of Driving with Carolina. Right now I am on my way to a friend's birthday. Uh, she lives in Santiago, which is it's about an hour and a half from Viña del Mar, which is where I live. For, for me, most of the time, driving this far, you know, just to be somewhere for a couple hours, it's usually not worth it. And what I want to talk to, to you about today in this episode is number one, how to be super mindful of your time. And number two, how to really, really be able to keep the people in your life that are really worth it. Right now, I'm at a stage in my life where I just don't have time for acquaintances anymore. As in, you know, people that I don't know that well. That I, think I, that I think are nice, but that don't really add any value to my life, personally or business-wise, and vice versa, where I cannot really add any value to their lives either. So I used to, I remember a few years ago when I was younger, when I was in my mid-20s, and an acquaintance would invite me to their birthday or something, I would, I would say yes, right? I would go. I would go and, you know, hang out for a couple hours, and it would be okay, and... Um, I just, I don't do that anymore. And the reason I don't do that anymore is because as time goes by, as I grow older and wiser, I appreciate and value my time tremendously. And I think it's normal. I think it's normal when we're younger to, to be less mindful of our time. And as we grow old, it just becomes more important. This is something that as entrepreneurs, we need to learn early on. I remember when I was just getting started, I would waste a lot of my precious time having meetings know work meetings or business meetings that usually would accomplish nothing or sometimes the meeting would go on for an hour an hour and a half and in the end whatever conclusions drawn out of the meeting could have could have been drawn in 15 20 minutes so I started micromanaging my time and only having meetings especially face-to-face -face meetings or Skype meetings when it was absolutely necessary and I recommend you start doing the same for your own business we get so caught up with busy work that makes us feel like we're getting things done and we get addicted to meetings and phone calls and then we feel really good about ourselves because oh, I got so much done because I did all these calls but then at the end of the day if you sit down and you look at your productivity for the day and you look at the time you spent on these phone calls and meetings that accomplished not much you will see that a lot of time went down the drain where you could have done really productive work instead. So start with that. Start with cutting meetings. Okay, now I'm mixing up, I'm mixing up both subjects. I'm going to talk about the acquaintances thing again in a bit. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is outsourcing. Outsourcing is important at any stage in business. Don't think that you need to be a six-figure business or a seven, eight-figure business before you start up outsourcing because guess what? You are not going to go through the five-figure barrier on your own. And I'm telling you this by experience. The moment I started hiring people to help me, my business skyrocketed because I was able to free up my time and dedicate it to the things that really mattered, to the things that ultimately brought in the dollars. And sometimes doing a little bit of graphic design or organizing your customers on your CRM or, or organizing them on an Excel sheet or even setting up your advertising campaign, sometimes those are not the things that you need to be doing. For me, at this point in my business and in my life, this is what I feel I need to be doing. Content and adding value and coaching my clients and speaking at events and organizing my masterminds and creating my next course, my next webinar. That's number one, that's what I'm passionate about. Number two, that's what really brings the ROI for me. So outsourcing. Now, where would you start if you're just getting started with your business and you want to outsource? My favorite website for this is upwork.com, not Fiverr. I've used Fiverr a couple times for like very specific things, like maybe getting a logo done. But if you want to hire somebody ongoing, somebody that could potentially work full time for you, go to upwork.com. You're going to get much better people there and 
I found a couple of people on that website that ultimately ended up working full time for me and they are amazing. My video editor, you know, this is another thing that I outsourced lately, my editing because my focus has been content and for a very long time I was editing my own videos which created a huge bottleneck so I started outsourcing that and for $25, $30 a piece you can get some really really good video editors and I've worked in fact even my company could do video editing for you I have an amazing video editor who would be happy to edit your videos as well so there will be a link in the description of this video if you want to find out more about the, the services my agency provides I have an agency called social ads agency where we do everything related to social advertising uh, whether it's paid or video editing content Facebook ads uh, social media management and more and so I'd love to help you out with that what else can you outsource there are a few things that I outsourced very early on and that was I had a virtual assistant and I still she still works for me she's awesome she's been working for me for like three years now maybe more and she started helping me organize my sales I had no idea how many sales I was making every day I had no idea um, how much money I was making every day because I was unable to track it because I was busy you know, doing the work to make it so my virtual assistant started helping me with that she started helping me organize my databases so for example once you acquire customers, you don't want to keep those customers in the same database as your leads. You want to have your customers on a specific database. And while you can automate this with Infusionsoft and a few other really cool CRM tools, if you just have a simple email marketing solution, or if you're selling affiliate marketing products where you don't own the billing part, then this is very, very important. There will, there will be almost no way for you to automate those things. So it will be important to have a virtual assistant helping you with your database, someone who could help you clean up your database, get rid of leads who are unresponsive, et cetera, et cetera. So probably the first person you wanna hire is gonna be a virtual assistant to help you with those things. Graphic design. Unless you are a graphic designer and that's how you make your money, you should not be doing graphic design for your business. And web development also you shouldn't be building your blogs and all those all those technical things you need to have people doing that because they will do it a lot better than you and again you'll be able to focus on the money generating activities of your business so that's what I recommend if you're just getting started that's what you need to be outsourcing to be more mindful of your time and dedicate your time to selling get really good at selling before you outsource it like that's my recommendation that's my principle because selling is such a valuable skill and so if you're gonna hire someone to sell you want to make sure that that person is, is better than you of course but you also want to make sure that if they quit tomorrow you're not suddenly out of sell out of a sales person in your business that you can step into that role and it's a skill that you're going to need whether you're cold calling people or not if you want to succeed in business my friend you need to understand that we all sell. Now back to the acquaintances thing, and that's what I'm gonna uh, share to wrap up this episode. Really take a moment and look at all the people in your life, the people that you spend most time with, people who are maybe in your family, or maybe colleagues at work, or people that work for you, maybe old friends from university or high school or whatever. And I'm not saying make a list of them. I, I've, I've never made a physical list of my friends. I mean, when I think about my friends, there are always certain people that pop up immediately, right? And so why I'm taking this trip where I'm only gonna be there for two hours, it's gonna, I'm gonna spend more time on the road than with my friends because this is one of those friends that even though we are really different in a lot of things like she's not an entrepreneur so we don't really talk about business which is good actually it's good to um, have a friend where I don't have to talk about business all the time um, but we've been friends for a very long time and she's one of those friends that I know will be there for me in the good times and the bad times and she has been and and so for me it's worth it to make this investment of my time to go see her on her special day. But like I said in the past, I would have driven this far just for somebody that I don't really care about that much, just to be liked, just to have something to do on a Saturday night. It's Saturday, by the way. 
I no longer care about those things. When I was a bit younger, I, I, I never really partied a lot, but I did, I did feel a bit bad when my mom would ask me on a Saturday night if I had, you know, plans, and I would be like, no, I don't, you know? And it's one of those silly things that just society has wired in into our psyche. Luckily, I've been able to build new neural pathways where those things for the last several years don't really matter to me anymore and I don't really care. And there is not a more liberating feeling in the world than doing what you want because you want to and not as an obligation. So I'm going to visit my friend because I want to. Ask yourself, my friend, how many things are you doing because you want to? And how many things are you doing because you feel obliged or, re or because you're an obligation, including your job? Anyway, I hadn't done an episode in a very long time, so this turned out to be a long episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got value. I hope you'll be more selective with your friends and acquaintances and stop spending time with people who are not adding any value to you on a personal level, spiritual level, business level, whatever level. And stick to the people that matter. Stick to the people that are going to be there for you no matter what. And by the way, if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button right now. Tap the notifications bell so you don't miss a single video from me because I'm uploading content all the time. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. By the way, give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. <laughs> that really, really helps. I'll see you soon.